never really considered anything else was the truth at that time. So I lived with this brother for eight months. And after that time, I moved out again. And I went back to my uh, family, my, my home family. And I went on a, a work term for the program that I was in in university for four months. And then after that four months term was over, I went back to university again. And this time I ended up living with, uh, I lived on campus. And I lived with three other roommates in a small apartment on campus. One of them was a Hindu. The other one was, uh, and the other two were, were Canadians from my province. One of which was a fairly heavy drug user, though they were light drugs, uh, marijuana and a few other things like that. Uh, and the other Canadian was an alcoholic. And when we lived with him, you know, when we lived in this place, this guy would disappear, Aoud would be left for three days, and man, he didn't even know what happened to him. <laughs> so you can imagine the kind of states that this, this person would be into. It's ridiculous. Anyway, and the best roommate out of the three who were there were, or was, the, the Hindu. I was quite surprised at his level of, let's say, uh, conservatism that he had within his family. When the other two were just, I mean... You know, unbelievable, right? The one who was a, a fairly, you know, avid drug user, he was uh, boasting about the fact that he had given his sister, he was the first one to give his sister drugs and alcohol. I mean, this is this is disgusting. I, I couldn't believe it. And the same with this this Hindu guy. When we were discussing it afterwards, I was like, man, can you believe what he said? This is this is disgusting. You know, what kind of family life are these people raised with? that he's boasting about giving his sister drugs and alcohol, right? It's just disgusting. Anyway, it was about three months, three months living in that uh, environment and not really thinking that much about religion, though still practicing, you know, as I would. And uh, speaking to people about God, but I mean, people don't really want to talk about God, right? So usually the conversation would change and they wouldn't really stay like that for, for too long. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, about three months into that semester, uh, it was November actually and I woke up one morning and I was in bed of course alhamdulillah <laughs> and I, I opened the curtain to look outside and it was snowing and it was quite cold and I was like hmm I don't think I'm going to go to school this morning I, I woke up late I already missed about one of my classes and uh, I said well why am I I'll just go in the afternoon I'll just take it easy and then I you know, went back to bed, looked up at the ceiling, and I said, what am I doing here with these roommates? Just started to ponder life a little bit, you know. I had one of these, one of these moments. And uh, <coughs> then I said basically, uh, sorry, I was reading some of the comments there. I said basically, what am I doing with this, in this place that I am? What am I doing with these, these people, right? Wasting my time. I wasn't doing too good in school that semester, though I passed, alhamdulillah all of my, my courses. I was thinking to myself, look at these terrible people I'm living with. You know, an alcoholic, uh, a Hindu polytheist, who is, whose idol was actually a giant uh, statue of an elephant with some arms. And subhanAllah, this elephant actually fell down one day and broke. SubhanAllah, how it fell down off of a shelf. But, alhamdulillah. Uh, anyway. So I woke up, and uh, subhanAllah, reading the comments distracts me sometimes. <laughs> And I was thinking to myself, what am I doing here with these roommates? And then I thought to myself, what about previously when I lived with these other good people? And I didn't only think about Muslims. I thought about some of the Christian people and the atheist people and other people who were, who were better mannered and, and just generally better people to live with. And then I said to myself, what about these Muslims in particular? They're really nice, they're really well mannered. And then I started to think about their religion. After I said, okay, well, yeah, they're really good people. The ones I live with were excellent. You know, they never backbit anyone. When I was with them, you know, it's like w if I wasn't with them, if I was with them, it would be the same thing. Some people, when I'd walk into some Canadian speaking, wh when I lived with them formerly, it was like when you enter the room, they're, just, they're speaking about you, and then they suddenly stop, and they're quiet. And subhanAllah, I've never felt this with, with Muslims at all when I live with them, alhamdulillah. And then I started to think, what about their religion? What about their belief system? What about the laws and beliefs that all the things that I'd read about until that point and, and discussed about and debated about until that point? And then I said, hmm, do I disagree with anything within Islam that I know about? 
and I thought about all the things that we had discussed over the last, you know, year or so. Or actually, up until that point that I actually first met Muslims. And I said, no, I don't disagree with anything that they have. And then I thought, well, you know, their religion, for the most part, seems better than what I have. They're better religiously. It makes more sense. And then I said, well, this must mean that their religion is from God. If it's better than what I have, and it makes more sense, it must be from God. And so I said, hmm, I need to wake up today. I need to go on the internet. I need to find out how to become a Muslim. I need to say the Shahada. And then, subhanAllah, you know, become a Muslim, right? And that's exactly what I did. I, I didn't know about the Shahada part. I just looked on the internet, how to become a Muslim. I found a website, Alhamdulillah. It said, one, two, three, four, you know, okay, say the Shahada. If you believe that the Quran is the word of Allah, which, you know, I, okay, I believe the word uh, of Allah is the Quran. I believe that's God's word. I believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was the last and final messenger. Yeah, I believe it, no problem. So it said, say these words, okay, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, ashadu wa Muhammad rasulullah. And then it said, go have a shower. I said, okay, sure. I went and had a shower, mashallah. And then I went in the fridge. And I said, oh, I got some bacon, you know, I got to get rid of it, right? Because you can't eat bacon anymore if you're, if you're a Muslim, right? So I opened my fridge and went down to the bottom drawer. And sure enough, I had half a pack of bacon left there, right? And I was like, well, man. What can I do with this? So anyway, I knocked on my roommate's door, the one who was the uh, the avid drug user. And I said, hey man, uh, you got anything to trade me for this bacon? He's like, oh, I got a ca can of beans here. It's like, yeah, sure, man. So anyway, I traded the last half, of ba half a pack of bacon that I had for a can of beans. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Anyway, I probably should have threw it away in the end, but I, I mean, alhamdulillah, I just became Muslim at the time. I didn't really know. So since then, alhamdulillah, I've been practicing Islam. It took uh, a little bit of time for me to learn the, the prayers and stuff like that. And uh, since I learned, uh, you know, when learning the basic things of Sunnah, learning the Aqeedah and, and things like this, it took some time. But uh, it was about a, almost a year after that, that I, about eight months after I actually converted, that I started learning about the basics of Islam when I went to uh, Ottawa, Can Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And there's one sheikh there named, uh, I'm not sure if anyone of you will know him, uh, his name was uh, Abu Abdurrahman Muhammad, uh, subhanAllah, what's, what's, what's he known as? SubhanAllah. I can't remember his, uh, what he's known as now, because I haven't spoken to him in quite some time. But alhamdulillah, he was one of the first known, it's not Muhammad Sharif. Uh, I can look it up after, inshallah, and let uh, let you brothers know. He's known to be one of the ones in, in Canada. He was a scholar from Medina, or a, a student in Medina, way back in the day. And uh, as far as I know, he's known as one of the, the talib ilm in uh, in Canada. Or he actually, he's above that level, subhanAllah. But, uh, mashallah, tabarakallah, he's one of the most knowledgeable brothers in, in Ontario, as far as I know, mashallah. And uh, he practices the sunnah and, uh, and gives many lectures about uh, that stuff, alhamdulillah. Anyway, currently... About uh, and it was actually in that semester that I I got to make Hajj Alhamdulillah. So one year one year after I was Muslim, actually one year in about a month because it was it was in December of that year. Actually, I I was actually given the opportunity with Alhamdulillah when I was in Ottawa that I got to make Hajj one year after I became Muslim. So really it was a it was an excellent excellent experience uh, for me to do that. And uh, really my life is uh, is amazing. Since uh, since becoming Muslim, Alhamdulillah, uh, I've graduated university. I got married, Alhamdulillah. Everything is working out so well, Alhamdulillah. And currently, I'm registered online with. Uh, if you guys want to check out the website, it's www.kiu.com, and it's the English section. It's Knowledge International University. They just opened in, uh, I think, the last uh, two year about two years ago in Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, mashallah tabarakallah, they're an excellent, uh, excellent learning, uh, learning source for me. Alhamdulillah. There's another brother in, in my same. No, I'm not. I'm not from Ottawa actually, though. I uh, I did work there for about four months, in one of the placements I did in my in my program. But uh, yeah, I, I also love that city very much. Mashallah, I love the brothers in that city too. Mashallah tabarakallah, really excellent, uh, excellent place. Alhamdulillah. But yeah, so basically that's uh, that's my story, and I recommend you guys to check out that. Uh, <coughs> the website kiu.org alhamdulillah so I don't know if you guys had any questions for me anything like that I mean if you wanted to give uh, give me anything personally and I actually about eight months ago there was one brother on YouTube his name is uh, converted to Islam if you search converted and then the number two and then Islam 
on uh, <coughs> on YouTube, you'll find that this brother, uh, Abu Adam Ismail, he's also in the same city with me now, actually. There's another brother named Abu Ayyub. If you search Abu Ayyub, A-B-O-A-Y-O-U-B on YouTube, he's another brother who's here with me as well uh, in the same city that I'm in. And they're fairly popular brothers on, on YouTube, actually. Uh, converted to Islam has about 15,000 subscribers. And Abu, uh, Abu Ayyub, uh, Majid, Majid Ayyub, has about, uh, I think, 9,000 now, or about, about that. And uh, alhamdulillah, they're in the same place that I'm in. I just started doing my own YouTube stuff about eight, eight months ago. And uh, if any of you ever check that out, please let me know of any mistakes that are in any of the videos to, to improve some of the, the da'wah that I've been trying to do, right? But uh, alhamdulillah. Yeah, basically that was my story of becoming, uh, becoming Muslim. What does your nick, nick stand for? <laughs> Alright, I'll tell you, man. The thing is, if, if you're in Canada, you, like the one, who's, the one who spoke about uh, Ontario, uh, originally I'm from Newfoundland, and it's a province in Canada. And if you're from here, they call you a Newfie. So what I did was I put my name as Newf to Islam on YouTube, right? <laughs> Subhanallah. That's basically why I have the, uh, the YouTube name. <laughs> Yeah, alhamdulillah. Al Ajjal, that, that's the brother's name. Uh, Abu Abdurrahman Muhammad Al Ajjal. Uh, Al Ajjal, I think it's Al Ajjal anyway. But uh, mashallah, he's fairly well known, I think, in, in the city of Ottawa. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Abu Abdurrahman Muhammad Ali. Uh, Al Ajjal, I think. How did your family take your reversion? Welcome, say Shahada. Uh, one second now. May Allah bless you. Amin, Amin. This is one thing that. Uh, uh, submission to Tawheed. You said my Shaykh. Say that again. Yeah, Abu Abdurrahman, listen, when you know him, tell him that Abdul Aziz Allen says, uh, Assalamu alaikum. I haven't spoken to him in some months. Also, wish him Ramadan Mubarak to me. Or to, to him, for me, if you would, please. And Jazakallah khair. Islam in my province, or, uh, okay, sister, <laughs> that's fine. But uh, Islam in my province in Canada, in, in Newfoundland, in the last year, probably in the last two years, there's been about eight or nine uh, Muslims who have became Muslim from here. A few of the women and a few of the men. The thing is, in, in my province, we don't really have any scholars of Islam, right? And Well, we don't have any scholars. And the problem is that, you know, it's difficult to manage new reverts if, unless really they have a strong, you know, a sense of guidance from Allah to find the right path and really stick with it. Sometimes it's, it's hard to you know, teach the people, uh, you know, the importance of prayers and going to the masjid and reading Qur'an and learning about aqeedah and, and things like this, right? You know, they're Muslims and stuff, uh, inshallah, alhamdulillah, you know, they're praying and fasting and things, but uh, they might not want to learn as fast as some other uh, some other people they uh, could teach them. Like if they were in Ottawa with some of the people who were there, mashallah, like the Shaykh Abu Abdurrahman, mashallah, tabarakallah, they would learn, I think, very quickly and they'd, you know, when you're around someone who really you you really love them for the sake of Allah and you love learning from them in, in their in their lessons and when you learn it even subhanallah it improves your iman so when you go home it's like you're like subhanallah the brothers and the the people who I'm with or, or sisters if you're a sister are you know their iman is so high and the lectures are you know are, are, there's so much excellent dhikr involved when you go home you're like I, I gotta pray at night time man subhanallah you know I've got to improve myself improve my iman uh, subhanallah and when you're on your own, it's, uh, you know, of course, it, it's a bit less than, than when you're with people. Alhamdulillah. It's one of the things we we try and stay as a group and stay with Muslims and in, in wherever we are in order to keep our level of iman up and, and things of that uh, that nature, right? Uh, someone asked me a question. They said, how did your family take your reversion? I'll tell you the, the different phases that what my uh, my family went through, actually. The first one was, was denial. Well, they, they didn't care, basically, that I became a Muslim. <coughs> I told my dad when we were driving home, and 
my university is 12 hours away from my home. That's my, my, my birthplace, right? So we were driving for 12 hours, and I told him on that drive home, I said, Dad, you know, I'm, I'm a Muslim now. And he said, oh, okay, you know, whatever. I said, well, I, I pray differently now. I, uh, you know, I believe some different stuff about Jesus now. And, you know, I gave him the rundown of everything. He's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Okay, sure, fine. You know, I guess he thought it was just a phase. And I went home and I told my family that stuff. And they're like, yeah, you know, no problem. Do whatever you want. It's fine. But uh, as time went on and uh, I was learning, you know, to pray more and <coughs> or learning the basics of Islam more and discussing it more, then they were like, okay, well, this is not a phase. This isn't just something that he's going to do for a week or, or a month. This is something he's going to keep doing. And it was at that point that they said, okay, well, you know, we should probably debate with him and uh, and tell him that he's wrong and try and fix him because there's something wrong with him, right? That's what my, the second phase of my family went through. And they said <coughs> that uh, basically, you know, get my mom said, get me a, get me a copy of the Quran so I can find out what's wrong with it and uh, and and discuss it with you. And I did that. I got a Quran gave it to them and really my dad didn't care too much I mean uh, the thing is I have to think about the father of Ibrahim alayhi when he said to his son basically that you know or I should say what my dad said reminded me of what the father of Ibrahim said when my dad said whatever you know whatever you tell me it doesn't matter the way I was raised it could be the wrongest thing in the world it could have no it might not have any truth in it at all but the way I was raised is the way I'm going to die and that's the and this is what a lot of the polytheists in Mecca said. You know, they said, how dare you change the religion of our forefathers? And this is how Abu Talib, he died with the religion of his... Uh, he said, I die on the on the religion of... Uh, SubhanAllah, I can't remember what he said exactly. But it was also the religion of his forefathers. He didn't accept Islam. And, you know, it's it's certainly ignorance not to not to do that when, when you're at that, that point in your life, right? When you know what you know. Anyway... Uh, <coughs> My mother used to bring me some, some verses sometime and, and some things, some comments she wrote about some things she disagrees with. And this is the thing about being a Muslim. It's one who submits to Allah. So we submit to His rule. We know that this earth, this universe is His. He's given us some conditions to live by. If we want to succeed in this life and the next life, we should follow what He's given us. Because the best thing that we can be is a slave to Allah or a servant to Allah. And so to have success in this life and the next life, it's to become a Muslim. Submit to God's, to Allah's rule and uh, live according to what he had commanded. But anyway, the Christians and other people do not agree with that. They, w they wish to live as they wish to live. They don't wish to follow a sharia or a law of Allah. They want to do whatever they want to do. And this is the thing with a Muslim, the difference between a Muslim and one of these people is that they want to do whatever they want to do and they're going to do it. And for a Muslim, we can do what we want to do within Allah's uh, sharia. If we want to go outside of that, then we're not allowed to do it. We're, we're outstepping the bounds we're allowed to do. And we may be punished by Allah, or we may be for, forgiven by Allah. But something else I was going to say about my, my family, actually, just quickly, is that, <coughs> uh, you know, well, I, I basically said it, like my dad said, you know, whatever you tell me, it's going to be wrong, because I believe what my father believed, and that's the end of it. My father died believing this, and I'm going to die believing this. I won't change my belief. And I I've heard that from... You know, quite a few people, and I really don't. Uh, I can say I I don't like when I hear that because that's that's ignorance, right? That's just putting up a, a block, a mind block. Whatever you tell me, it doesn't matter. Tell me whatever you want. I'm not going to believe you anyway. Subhanallah. And uh, for me, being a Muslim, I mean, alhamdulillah. If someone were to bring me, if someone were really to prove that Islam is wrong, I mean, if I'm really as open-minded and I believe. Uh, and my belief is as strong as it is in, in, in Allah, in God, then if they prove that Islam is wrong, if they prove that the Qur'an is, is not the word of Allah, then I, should, I shouldn't believe it anymore. But, uh, alhamdulillah, this will be impossible for them to do. And they've, they've, the, the kuffar have been trying to do this for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they haven't done it, alhamdulillah. And they can still keep trying to do it, and they won't succeed. But they'll keep trying to extinguish the light of Allah, and they'll never be able to do that, alhamdulillah. Bad people don't like changes to good, yeah. So anyway, now though my family is quite supportive of me, uh, the only thing they're not as supportive of me is, is the DAO that I've been doing on YouTube. And like I've said, my the username that I'm using here is actually 
uh, the same one that I use on YouTube. I only created this account a few days ago uh, because of one brother converted to Islam, which is also on YouTube, but he spent some time on Pal Talk. I was over to his house the other day, uh, at Ismail's house, and uh, we made some dawah on uh, on this program here. Uh, what's this called again? I only got it the other day. SubhanAllah. A Pal Talk. Yeah, that's right. And... Uh, Anyway, yeah, so I saw some benefit in going online and, and speaking to some people and speaking to some, some Christians who are interested in Islam. And uh, I think it's good. I mean, I saw this channel here now, Why We Became Muslims, New Muslims Please Share. I mean, it's an excellent opportunity for new Muslims to come in and discuss with each other why they became Muslim. And it's, it's a great, uh, alhamdulillah, that's a great thing for people like me. If I live in a place with not that many converts, it would be nice to come in and see these uh, revert stories. And yeah, I've seen uh, lots of revert stories on, on YouTube as well, actually. SubhanAllah. But anyway, to continue on, my family now does, uh, let's say they accept the fact that I'm Muslim, though to be honest, there's some things they disagree with. Uh, like, uh, well, certain things, like my mom is, a, you know, she considers herself, I guess, maybe somewhat religious or something like that. Though, if I say, well, mom, you know, uh, if I tell her about the things about Islam, she says, you know, maybe if she was more religious, maybe she'd be Muslim, but she just thinks there's too many things to follow. She says, there's too many rules. Islam has too many rules for me to follow. And I mean, this is her choice. For me, I believe the religion of Allah, uh, the religion of Allah is Islam. The religion of God is Islam. And the rules are there for reasons. To protect yourself and the community. And to give you a paradise. And to be successful in this life and the next life. So that's why I follow them. I want to please Allah and uh, have paradise when I die. But for other people, they don't see a benefit in that. They see the benefit in their life currently. And they say, well, you know, why would I wake up for Fajr prayer? If I wake up in the morning, I'll disturb my sleep, and I'll be tired at work. So I'm not going to wake up in the morning. But a Muslim will wake up in the morning because Allah has commanded him, or commanded her, to wake up and pray Fajr on time in the morning, to be successful in this life and the hereafter. And the best, uh, the best thing would be in the hereafter, alhamdulillah. But yeah, for the most part, my family supports me very well. I've seen a lot of converts, especially women converts. To be honest, the ones who are the hardest hit in Canada, and this is supposed to be a joke, it's a complete joke. If you say that Canada is a completely free-thinking, you know, dem democratic society, you know, you can do what you want, say what you want, it's just a, com it's a complete lie. Because I've seen, from my own eyes, families here who have completely shunned their, their daughters and kicked them out and hated them because, because they became Muslim. And even, even uh, there was one man convert here, uh, a young man. His friends came and assaulted him and beat him up. And they did it more than once. And they used to make fun of him. And they would always be calling his mother, saying his son was uh, going to be a suicide bomber and giving her all this stress. And she was actually a, a divorced and, uh, you know, sort of a hurt woman. Uh, really, these people were giving him such a hard time just because he decided to change his, his religion. And uh, subhanAllah, even at the time of the Prophet وسلم, and before that, were you know the same thing happens over and over and over again. Someone comes with the truth, other people reject it, and then they harass them or kill them. In our time, Alhamdulillah, it's much more difficult to kill someone, uh, which is good in, in Canada here because we need to preach Islam. And some people come and uh, uh, what can I say? They they come here. I was just reading something here. Woman, if she offer herself to the Prophet, do you believe in that? I'm not sure what this Monks 125 guy is saying, but anyway. Uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah. So it's great to be a Muslim, and uh, I lost my chain of thought there. But if you guys have any other questions, or uh, anyone in the room has any other questions, please let me know. Yeah, Ben Adam. Uh, that's a good idea. You know, I, I well, I told them that. I explained to them these things. There's a bunch of rules. They, they're like, well, we want to do music. We want to do this. We want to do that. And I've explained to them before that the most important thing is to not to, ex you know, basically to accept only that Allah is worthy of worship and no one else is worthy of worship. But this is their own. This is their choice. You know, for them, it seems that they don't want to accept this yet. And that's the thing about, subhanAllah, the choice. There's no compulsion in religion. People are like, well, you know, it sounds good, but it's just not for me. It's just not for me. So, may, you know, may Allah guide my family to Islam. Really, there's no guidance unless Allah guides someone. No way. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah.
Was there any other uh, questions or, or anything before I take off here? Yeah, you're very welcome, uh, Sohail. Tell us about your family, please. <laughs> yeah, right. It took about ten minutes. I've got to go and do some uh, some other work. Wayak, uh, wayak, may Allah bless you as well. Uh, but inshallah, maybe another time. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, I'll discuss it another time. But I, I believe one brother was recording some parts of this, or maybe all of it. So someone can uh, uh, explain to them. I don't know what this brother, what, what this person was saying, or what I mean if a believing woman doesn't matter anyway. Alhamdulillah. I'm just wondering uh, where are you, wh where is this based from, or who who set up this room? Is this some kind of Islamic organization or Dawah center or? Night N1. Okay. What's he going to do with the audio recordings? <laughs> Sell to the FBI. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> That's funny, man. Mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> Yeah, alhamdulillah, good. Good for him, mashallah. Make some da'wah to the uh, the FBI, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Maybe they'll be gu maybe they'll guide someone to Islam, mashallah. Mashallah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> All right. Uh, barakallahu fikum. That's the end of it for now. Inshallah, I'll, I'll discuss with you all later on. Jazakum Allah khair. Inshallah, all of us, everyone. You're very welcome. Well, um, you may see me again, inshallah, online. Yeah, inshallah. Put the text, the sites. Uh, I'll add my YouTube there if you want. But uh, yeah, anyone who wants to add me to their palace, just uh, just do so. I like I said, I'm new to uh, I'm new to this uh, subhanallah, pal talk. Yeah. Okay, that's all for now. Inshallah, we'll see you all later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fi amanallah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu alfiq. That was very, very nice, brother. And you are welcome to come here whenever you like. Yes, save us to your favorites. I added you to my friends list, brother, so... I've been coming here for about two months now, Aki, so I'm I'm kind of new too here, pal talk. Yes, yes, brother. Yes, yes, sure. You can post it. Let me check that out. Aki, can I ask you, like, uh, what is your nationality? Where does your family come from? Canadian? Mashallah. Okay. English and Scottish? Oh, okay. MashaAllah, bro. Mm. 
me check out your YouTube channel. So, it's not loading up. Okay, yeah, thank you, yeah, because that other one wasn't working. Okay. Okay, now I have it. Mashallah. Good. Is that you, brother? Is that you? Is that your picture? Wow, bro. Mashallah. Beautiful, beautiful beard. <laughs> beautiful beard, bro. <laughs> very, very nice. May Allah give me a beautiful beard like you. It's right next to his name, Aki, on the YouTube page. You see, it says his name, New, New F2 Islam, and you see his picture. Yeah, mashallah. Beautiful beard. <laughs> you said you've been Muslim for like six years, brother? Yeah, Aki. Yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, I converted to I converted to Islam in 2005 too. Alhamdulillah. I'm an ex-Catholic from America. America. Yeehaw! No, I'm not no cowboy. Okay. <laughs> inshallah, brother. Take your yeah. Inshallah, come back here. Inshallah, when you're done. Very good to see you. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Take care. He seems like a real nice brother. Alhamdulillah. Should I read this uh, poem on the mic? Aki Fire, you want to hear it? Tazneef? Yeah, brother Knight. Tazneef gave me this poem that he wrote. It's really, really good, Aki. I would, okay. Allah. Oh, it's called, O oh, People of Intellect. O oh, People of Intellect, this is a message from the people of Revelation. O oh, People of Desire, these are some questions from the people of Devotion. O oh, People of Uncertainty, this is a warning from the people of Faith. You question revelation, but do you question yourselves? Would you question the cure of medicine for its bitter taste? Verily, it cures you, whether it is sweet or bitter. Would you question your food when you are hungry? Verily, it feeds you, whether it is sweet or bitter. Or would you question even the water when you are thirsty? Verily, it quenches your thirst, whether it is sweet or bitter. Do you question the word of your Lord if you cannot comprehend? Thoroughly, it is the truth whether you find it sweet or bitter. The Creator had created things far beyond our knowledge. Your children find new creatures and places of which you never knew. You don't know about the stars and the sky, yet expect to know the one above the heavens. The ocean will never pour into one man's cup. All air cannot be taken by one man's breath. All food cannot be held by one man's stomach. All sound cannot be heard by one man's ears. All scent cannot be smelt by one man's nose. Nor can all knowledge be held in one man's mind. Why do you act as if the head above your body is above the one above the heavens? The best among mankind lower their heads in prayer while you raise your head above revelation. How ironic it is that the head, which is plain, is filled with misguidance and the head that is covered in dust is filled with devotion and guidance. Musa, Moses is a witness to the crumbling of the mountains at the might of the Lord. Do you think your mind could comprehend the one who the mountains could not bear? Do you think your mind could comprehend the one who the mountains could not bear? Do you think your mind could comprehend the one who the mountains could not bear? Allahu Akbar. That's it. That's, you know, mashallah, this brother's got some real talent, man. Tazneef. 
Yeah, he's got some real talent, Aki. Most of all, I like that roll a lot. Did, did everybody hear it? Did I think to get lectures? No, not really, sister. Sound like a preacher. <laughs> you think so? Thank you. Really? Wow, thanks. I really appreciate that. Makes me feel good. That makes me feel very, very good. I think that I stutter. I don't know. People tell me that it's in my head. They said that they never heard me stutter, but I don't know. I think I stutter. Did you ever hear me stutter? You never heard me stutter. I'm clear. I think, yeah. I always have, like, that fear that I'm stuttering. I don't, I don't know why, but... Lucky night, what's she, what's she referring to? Dunya Sijjan al Mukmin wa Janat al Kafir. I love that hadith. Wa alaikum salam. Welcome back, sister. You know that hadith? I love that hadith, man. Ad Dunya Sijjan al Mukmin wa Janat al Kafir. This world's a prison for the believer and a paradise for the Kafir. their Muslim sister. Yesterday, I came home, and there was like 15, 15 kufar in, uh, in the garage with my uncle. It was, subhanAllah, you know, this, uh, yeah, my uncle is 45, he's hanging out with all these, like, 16-year-olds, and they're all outside, you know, talking about all the filth, you know, all the filth, talking about zina and depth. He's like, oh, I'm proud of you. He's talking to this one kid. He's like, I'm proud of you for committing zina. I'm thinking like, <sighs> evil people, man. Evil people. That's why I stay in my room all day. I got to get my door fixed and locked if it's broke. Inshallah. Inshallah. Hello, Zohar. <laughs> Use the Zohan. <laughs> As you say, are you a Muslim, Zohar? Zohar, are you a Muslim? What are you? Wa alaikum. You enjoy studying in it, mashallah. Okay. What are you at the moment? Are you Christian? And the Yahud, you're a Jew. And the Yahud, you practice Judaism. Were you born a Jew? You were raised a Jew. Okay. Half of your family is from Iran. Oh yeah, the Jews in Isfahan who will follow the Messiah, the Jav, the Yahud from Isfahan. You know, when they, when uh, the Messiah, the Jav comes, they're gonna believe that that's the real Messiah, and they're gonna follow him, the Yahud from Isfahan. Half Persian Jews. You enjoy studying Islam. That's good. That's very good. So how can we help you today, Zohar? How can we help you? Do you have any questions? You just came to listen? Listen, okay. Uh, 
الحمد لله. Do you pray to the wall of pride? <laughs> yeah, sure. You could take the mic and ask a question. Go ahead. Can you hear me? If you can, just press one. So I was trying to say in text chat, as you would say, "Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa And it's nice to be here and just to listen to people's ideas. And um, yeah, just I just wanted to hear in terms of what people are saying and. Uh, I, I'm always interested in terms of people converting to different religions, so it's interesting just to listen to people explain why they why they did that. I guess I do have a question for the admin. Um, I have friends who are Muslim, quite a few, and they say that the only people that need to take the, the Christians do not have to take jihada to enter Jannah. Now I wish to say in the first place, some, some of these people are not Sunnis; they're they're Shia. But they told me that the only people that need to take shahada to go to heaven are the Jews and the, and the idolaters, and that um, a person who's Christian doesn't have to do that. So I wonder where that came from. So I started to study the top seers of Ibn Kathir, and I've really enjoyed, to be honest, studying them. And, but to keep my attention, studying the Quran. And I couldn't find that anywhere in terms of where it said that um, because a person is, is a Christian that they have automatic entrance into, into Jhana. Yeah, I, you know, I actually admire Ibn Kathir. He reminds me, and I hope you don't take this as offensive, um, but one of the greatest scholars that we have is named Maimonides, um, and uh, who was a very good linguist, but also very good in terms of knowing the difference between what he knew and what he didn't know. And the thing that I'm, I'm most appreciated about Ibn Kathir is that although he works a lot from the from the Sunnah, from like Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari, he'll also be very, very clear if he doesn't himself know the answer. And that is, in my opinion, the real mark of a true scholar. So I decided last year to buy the entire set of tafsirs and I went through and I compared the tafsirs of him like to somebody like Zayed Abdullah Madudi. And Madudi was so different, so different than Ibn Kathir. Um, but uh, I'll release the microphone. I did want to tell you on um, my religion but I, that I practice, and I pra I'm what's called conservadox, so I'm pretty close to orthodoxy. Um, the Shabbat entered here, so I don't come with any hatred against um, people who are Muslim, because I, the, your concept of Tawheed is very similar to our concept of the oneness of God, and that's it. I'll release the microphone. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, so uh, you, you can take your time with the mic. You don't have to give it up. Yeah, I've heard that from many Jewish scholars, you know. Uh... But your question, uh, I was raised a Catholic, and I converted to Islam in 2005. And yes, the Christian must take the Shahada. He must declare that there is only one God worthy of worship, Allah, God Almighty, the Creator, right? And also bearing witness that Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah. And also, a Christian, when he takes Shahada, should bear witness that Jesus is a messenger and a servant of God. The Messiah and a spirit and a word from God. The Christians believe that he is God in the flesh, the word made manifest in the flesh, but we don't believe that. We believe that he is from God. God cast the spirit of Jesus into the Virgin Mary. Go ahead, Mike Free. Oh, thank you. Um, if I remember right, the word is Kalimat Allah. And it was, he was a word of Allah. Am I correct? And please forgive me for my Arabic pronunciation. Um, yeah, I, as I said, I um, I can speak Hebrew fluently, but if I tried to say.
Hey, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Amin, Rahman, Rahim, Maliki, Humadin, Yakin, Nabudu, Ikhtanestin, 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 You're probably going to say, oh, you're slaughtering Surah al Fatiha. And I probably am. Um, but, I, but it's out of appreciation. It's out of appreciation for the religion. And I'm glad that you found hope and peace in Islam, to be honest. So. In terms of why you left the Catholic Church, I mean, I think that I don't. I mean, I think that if if you're happy now in terms of with the Islamic community, I think that's wonderful. Oh, you know, to be honest, I think that I guess this is a difference because for Christianity and Islam are very evangelical. And what I mean is, is that there's a lot of focus on either in Greek evangelion the proclamation of the gospel, or in Islam, the concept of da'wah. I mean, in terms of that. And so they're both very, very similar in terms of that. Um, but I, I don't believe in terms of praying to a human being. I mean, I, I guess I don't have any problem with Jesus of Nazareth um, being a prophet. I think the problem is, is that there's no information reliable that shows that he claimed to be just that. I think that that's what the difference would be in. Oh, oh, I can, I can relate to that, but I've never been interested in, uh, in the church. But as I said, I think if somebody finds peace in it, you know, and, and they feel like that's where they're getting their spiritual connection at, I'm not gonna try to throw them off course. But as for me, I don't believe in praying in anybody who's a human being. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I think. Because if you, if you are really, really searching for God, you'll find out that God has been searching for you. That's what I believe. If you're, if you're truly seeking um, panim al panim, literally to stand in the face of God, you only need to go to the mirror and pray. And that's kind of what I believe. And so I think that if you found it in Islam, I think that's wonderful. Um, well, I've had uh, a lot of discussions with friends of mine who are Muslim over this topic. Oh, I would agree. And I would also say this. Um, in a lot of ways, um, what we don't recognize until the end is that actually God was taking steps towards us before we even started to take steps towards God. That is the real ironic issue. We see it in terms of that, you know, if we do this, if you come to me, then I'll come to you. And in the end, we come to see that instead of God, we us pursuing God, it was actually God in the first place pursuing us. I, ironic, you have to admit. Very ironic. And I think that that would be a very hard adjustment to go from Catholicism to Islam simply because there's so much focus on the saints within the Catholic Church and praying to them. Well, do, do you know what I mean, you know? Or, or, although some Catholics will say that they don't pray to, that they intercede. Is that the correct thing? They intercede? Yeah, because I, I have, as I said, I have, I have friends of mine who are from Iran and they'll talk about praying to Ali and they'll say, you know, Ali, peace be upon him. And I'll say, well, is that really right for you to say? Um, and they'll say, oh, you wouldn't understand because you're a Jew. And I said, OK, well, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, it doesn't make sense to you because you're a Yehudi. You know, you're a Jew. And anybody who's Muslim, they would see that. Well, you know what the mindset is. You've been around the Islamic view long enough than me. It's just kind of like if it comes from the mouth of a Jew, it's like coming from the mouth of Shaitan. So they, they, they don't care anything about it. And But for several years, they were very much intent, you know, in terms of trying to prove some of my friends that uh, it's okay to pray to, for Ali and for all these other people for intercessionary prayers. And I just said, I, I just don't see it. So one of the books that I got, um, yep. I, I, I'm a, I also practice the religion of Judaism. There's some people who claim that, but for me, I'm, I'm actually practicing the religion. Um, yeah, I agree. To be honest, I agree with you. And the, the hardest thing is when 
The hardest thing for me was after 911, and I'll tell you why. I was taken off the plane probably four times after 911 because at that time, I mean, I had a beard. Um, I don't have one now, but at the time I had a beard, and uh, I'm pretty dark skinned in terms of color. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm noticeably not from around these parts. So I would go to the airport. I was taken off the flights, and they and they'd say, you know, where are you? You know, where do you come from? You come from Syria? Come from Saudi Arabia? I was like, no, I come from uh, New York. And they said, well, are you? And I said, I'm a Jew. He said, you're not a Jew. And I said, no, I've, I am. Shema Israel of the Nile Hainu the Nile Khat. And they said, well, why are you traveling reading the Quran as well? I said, because eh, I also have a copy of the Bhagavad Gita. I want to learn what different people have to say. But you, I don't know if you were a pal talk back then, but people were making jokes. People were making jokes, and they were saying, you know, I want you, I, we're going to make every pork, you know. Um, everybody has to eat pork in the United States. And when I went to them and I said, you know, when you say that kinds of stuff, you're insulting my religion. Does that make sense? Yeah. But it, when you when people talk like that in terms of let's go and make everybody eat pork, then you're also talking about destroying what I believe in. Let's let's force these people to, um, I don't know. They they make very vile comments about Mecca and Medina, and I don't have any. As I said, it's very ironic that, and I'll go into some of these rooms. And I'll see people whose, I don't know, whose mother-in-law was Jewish, and they claim to be Jewish, even though they've been practicing Christianity for ten years. But I think there's a lot of reasons why not to eat pork. But I think the the most important reason is that we're simply commanded not to. I mean, for me, that's more than enough. I mean, for some people, they need an ex. You know, everybody, I'll tell you something. Everybody has been persecuted, and everybody has been the persecutor. I don't, I don't believe that, I mean, I, in my opinion, you know, and I think that happens in the world today. That, I mean, the people who are persecuted become persecutors, and, the, and it's just a vicious cycle of humanity. That, um, I can't remember the Arabic, what is the Arabic word for passion? Uh, nafs, is that how you say it? It just is. I mean, you know, people people feel persecuted. Uh, Nazifs, I, I can't remember. But um, essentially, when our passions take over and our lives are not guided by Iman and Urdin, the human passion takes over and we completely think, we don't even know about uh, where our religion is anymore. Yeah, Nafs, okay, thank you. Yeah, I couldn't remember what it was. When our, when, our, when our ego becomes more important and the, and the desires of the ego become more important than the desires of the soul to please our creator and to live a life that's pleasing to him, to not have other deities that we pray to, including money in our society. If you think about it, money itself has become a god. It's not, I mean, I think that when the Quran and I, I would say also the Torah talk about not worshiping any other god but him, there's a lot of other gods that we have that are not simply just, um, and that's why I like that Bill Phillips' book on Tawheed, because it kind of brought that out. So. Yeah. Oh, sure. You know, it's interesting, because um, are, are you on the East Coast or the West Coast, if I may ask? East? Because it's interesting, I wonder what, what, I want, because our prayer time for our last one is in about, I think, 15 minutes. But do you, I, when you pray, when you do, you do, I, do, do you call it Maghreb prayer? What do you call your last prayer of the day? That is so interesting, because that's the same exact word that we, oh, so you're praying Isha prayer. Maghreb is the prayer at sunset. That's kind of what I thought. You know, it's interesting because we're, the, we're, we use the same exact word, the same exact thing. And I'll be off for about 10 minutes while I do our prayers. But I, I, think, it's, I think it's very interesting. We use the same exact word, my group prayer, sunset. So I'll release the microphone. I'll still be in the room. And, and I'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes.
I'll be right back in ten minutes. Uh, yes, uh, Zohar, please don't leave. Be right back. Wa alaikum salam, Aki.